I would like to introduce uh, the first speaker at the conference, Professor Peter Herman from the Human Rights Center Law School at the Central South University, Changsha, China. And uh, his presentation, Overcoming the Tension Between Digital Transformation and ESG, the Case for an Oral Governance Approach. Uh, please, Professor Herman, the floor is yours. Uh, please turn on your microphone. We don't hear you. Uh, no, not yet. Oh, it seems that something is with your mic because we don't hear you. Mm. Yep, yep, now we hear you. Okay, so uh, in the middle of the, the topic, in a way, uh, digitization, artificial intelligence, and how to use it, which I think uh, still means we need human beings, uh, real human beings in a real world. And this is what I want to look at. Uh, in the invitation, there was something of a sustainability ecology uh, talking about the hype. And this is definitely true, justified in some way. And nevertheless, I want to look at a broader picture. If it, what, what is this hype about? Is it just public publicized mood or are we actually facing a real change? And their digitization and artificial intelligence may help us to find not the answer or not perhaps the answer, but not the question. And I think this is the major thing. We have to clarify what is actually the the, the, the real question behind ecologic, uh, ecological corporate social responsibility. Is it a matter of publicity? Is it a matter of real change, changes in reality, or just the perception of reality? And if we, if we look at the level of reality, is it about objective structural changes or changes in the global setting and with this in the possibilities to act, because we are facing possibly a different framework where we cannot simply continue way acting as we did before, which means there are power structures as well involved. This is my background from human law, uh, human rights law. It is about not only paragraphs, articles, but it is about powers. Fundamental problem is analytically and structurally, the understanding of totality, integrity, and unity. This is always forgotten when we talk about uh, governance. And today, this totality or integrity is not constituted by what we find in economics as use value. There we have had this, we use something, we produce it for use, we did at least, and we find in both areas, economics and uh, political science and law, a different way that we actually find something, the emergence of what is based in exchange values. Exchange value is clear in the market, producing for the market to sell, not to be used. In political systems, we have the same votes, offices, and the like, this is what we are looking for, not major content. That's at least a danger. And again, in uh, economics, we find a parallel that the gener generation of uh, political exchange value was traditionally in votes. Now with governance, it is in stakes. And stakes is a kind of abstract general media where we are looking for having as many stakes in the entire process of negotiations as possible. This is, or this means splitting up the overall political process, paying in change in little coins, but forgetting that it is about an entire capital structure in, in entirety we have to pay for. 
The structural problem, I don't know if it's unavoidable, we have to discuss this, is that this entire process is further split up as political process, further establishing new play, new layers in form of variant, various governance structures. Ecology, environmental issues as a separate thing, uh, social, social issues, digital control, and, and, and. Traditional governments had been as well highly differentiated, but it was an internal differentiation. Nowadays, we are facing with governments, the opposite is external differentiation. Externalization having separate bodies looking at something that seems to be necessary in this little realm, leaving out of control or out of sight what the entire thing is about. Which means diversity, individuality, flexibility, openness on the surface. This is about governance having diff uh, different stakes. But at the same time, if we look at the power behind it, everything happens under one label. The big players still play a major role. They have the saying, they have the opportunity to enter governance processes. Now, what I think is behind it in the development, long-term development, the humankind moved into a trap, separating from nature, first step, division of labor, second step, social division, class divisions, next step, third, and fourth, the separation from him or herself. Give it away to artificial intelligence, this will manage. Google Bad, ChatGPT, or something like this. Now, I think we have to look at something coming to an end. It is not about governance. We still need government. We still need a central body that keeps the overall bracket, if you want, uh, from the beginning, from the outset. It is not mainstreaming the diverse topics, but it is about what had been called often democratic centralism, having, of course, a say by the expert, by people being immediately concerned, but linking it into one body. Not political democracy, though this is very pro, uh, pro, um, provocative and not control, regulative control, but a real economy. And I think this is important to keep in mind, useful for the production production of everyday life. Coming um, with a quote from Eliot to the end, we shall not cease from exploration and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time through the unknown remembered gate. And I think this brings it really to the point we always have to go back to understanding the world we live in and not its single part. We, it's not a jigsaw, but we have to start from the general and then we have to look at moves of govern, government and looking at something that is interesting for consideration just to the end. It's interesting that the highest CO2 emission is coming from the rich countries, not and, uh, and, and the least sustainable economic models are located in the richest and in the socially most contradictory societies. Entity, integrity, this is where we have to start. And then we can go into detail, not the other way around. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Herman. Uh, any questions from the guests of the conference? May I have a question? Yes. Uh, Prof. Peter Hammond, thank you very much for your uh, broad vision on this topic and the interconnection between the topics. Uh, you've told that we need uh, government and uh, at the same time, as far as I understood, the governance. And uh, how do you see this uh, governance part? Should it be on the level of companies or some international organizations? 
to navigate this digital transformation and sustainability? Well, I think we, we have a major problem there with the, with the big players. Um, the, the GAFA, uh, Google and, and others, they are controlling it. I think this is something where we actually have this exactly this. This is government. They are experts and they are experts. They know exactly what to do. Uh, but there is no control of them. And this is what we try actually in China now, uh, that we have the, the, the major players there as well, Tencent, Baidu, and all these names. But at the same time, we say we have to limit the private power. We have to look for it, that it is integrating into, um, into a societal model. This is exactly what is often said uh, when, when we look at China, it is about control. It is about control of these players who want to control us. And it's not the other way around. And I think this is something where we see exactly the opposite in the West. Google is controlling us. Nobody is able to control it. And there we at least we try uh, to, to limit this, this kind of governance. Yeah, thank you. It seems that China is less democratic. It's discussed like this at least, but in these topics and for you, from your experience, it seems like it is more democratic than the West. Yeah, I, I would agree. Although in a different way democratic. It's not about elections every four years 